and welcome back to Sea of Thieves. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how not to suck at Sea of Thieves. This will be part two of the only series which will show you how to become a much better player if you're just starting off. First thing is, raise the back sails on the back of the brigantine so your helmsman can see where he's going. Second thing is, if you're trying to make a tighter turn, raise at least partially one of your sails, if not both, or all three, depending on what kind of ship you're on, in order to make a tighter turn. This will help speed you up and definitely help you if you're pursuing a smaller vessel. Alright, now we're going to start covering the anchor. So the first thing to keep in mind is that when you're coming up to an island trying to park, you should be raising your sails while approaching. You should not be dropping your anchor. This will allow you to get away from the island quicker if someone comes out of nowhere and it will also allow you to get out of a tight spot. Now exceptions to this would be if there's a storm. If there is a storm you will want to drop your anchor in order to keep your ship in the same place. And yes, so coming up on here you'll see that we dropped the sail just a little bit to give us a little bit of speed and then we're going to pull it right back up again. This will effectively do the same thing as an anchor except we drift in. Alright. And here you'll see we just sunk a ship right here in front of us. And what you're going to want to do after sinking a ship is park on top of it and drop the anchor. That way, if the enemy crew respawns, then you can go ahead and take care of them without the fear of them driving your ship away or into the rocks And in case of them boarding you. As you can see here, we only saw two of them, so there might have been a third. All right. Also, if you are in need of a very tight turn and you're definitely in a hurry, what you're going to want to do is turn your, your wheel all the way to one side and drop your anchor. This will allow you to perform the handbrake turn, which will spin you around very quickly. It is recommended, though, that your entire crew, myself being a one-man crew at the moment, gets on the anchor and raises up as fast as possible, and then immediately adjusting the sails after moving your wheel. Alright, next thing is, drop your anchor when you've just sunk someone in an outpost. We just sunk someone on the other side of this outpost, so we'll go ahead and drop our anchor. This will also allow us to uh, get next to the dock. As far as your sword goes, everybody knows about the sword lunge and the basic attack, but if you hold block, you can also jump while doing this, and this will allow you to strafe around your boat uh, very, very quickly, and it's very useful for a blade evading blunderbuss shots and also sword dashes. If you hold block and charge, it'll allow you to move around much quicker during your charge, and it will also allow you to jump. Now if you time this jump correctly, as I'm about to demonstrate, it will send you flying. This is very, very useful, as you will be able to strike someone from much further distance, and it will also allow you to skid across the water from places you normally wouldn't be able to, such as over the edge of your boat, or other places such as um, back onto your boat from another vessel or from a rock. And then moving on, if you just get, uh, do a sword dash through the water, you'll end up skidding through the water at a very fast speed. Very useful for getting around. And then here you'll see we have our cannons. The cannons, you will want to keep them all loaded except for one on each side. This is so that you can fire your teammates onto an island that you're passing by, or you can fire yourself onto an enemy vessel. You always, always want to make sure that you're constantly scanning around you for any enemy ships, because the more combat awareness you have, the better chances you have of not being the next person to sink and see at Thieves. All right, and on to the alliance system. So with the new alliance system, you can offer an alliance, and then you can have somebody else join your alliance, and then they can leave your alliance. Now for this, what you're going to want to keep in mind is that if you are the one in an alliance and you turn in the loot, you will get 100% of what that loot was worth. If you are alliance with someone who turned in the loot, then you will get 50% of what it was worth. So... It never hurts you to be in an alliance if you're the one turning it in. But keep in mind that if you're in an alliance and your alliance mate turns it in, you're going to be losing 50% of the loot. Alright, and moving on to 
uh, your mermaids. So if your boat left you behind, like any good crew should, then go ahead and run the exact opposite direction. This also applies if you fell off the back of your boat, since mermaids are based on proximity. Coming up here, as you can see, we're pursuing another vessel, so you always want to be watching your ladders and protecting your anchor when you're pursuing an enemy vessel. As demonstrated here, this guy tried to board us and drop our anchor, so we, because we were watching, we were able to quickly take care of him and save our anchor from dropping. This is all very important when pursuing an enemy vessel. Also, if you are chasing someone and you hear this music and the water start turning red, it means that you've gone off the map and you'll soon start taking damage, as you're about to hear. There's a giant thing in the water. I don't know what it is, and I don't want to find out. It's already dead, so I mean... Oh, yeah. Alright, and as you can hear from the language our the boat ahead of us is using, the Red Sea is not somewhere that you want to spend a lot of time in, as you'll start to take a lot of damage very quickly. So go ahead and turn straight out of that, but make sure that your enemy is further in than you are. I'd also recommend dropping their anchor if you can, as you can see that we did here, as it pretty much ensures that they will sink. You'll, be, you'll need to repair and bail as fast as you can in order to survive getting out of there, especially if there's a Megalodon after you. And speaking of the Megalodon, if you hear this music, it means that you have been engaged by an aggro Megalodon. Now, some Megalodons are passive and some are naturally aggressive. Uh, that means that you don't want to start just shooting at one out of the blue. If you don't hear this music and there's a Megalodon around, it means that it's either waiting for you to shoot it to become aggro, or if you shoot it, it'll be run away, or it'll become aggro over time. I'd recommend, if you hear this current music, the very fast-paced Jaws-like music, to run away from whatever end you just saw the Megalodon on, as it means that you have just a few seconds before it attacks you. And what you're going to want to do if a Megalodon starts attacking you is either A, kill it, or B, you're going to want to run to the nearest island. Once within range of an island, a Megalodon will leave you alone. And a quick side note here, if you have the gold notch of the steering wheel lined up with your mass, you will be heading straight. And if you have an explosive barrel with you and you're trying to stealthily kill an enemy ship, drop the explosive barrel under the front of their ship. Then swim up as quickly as you can and climb up their crow's nest. And once you hear that explosion, they will all come running to go and repair their holes. None of them are going to be looking up to see if you're up there. And what you're going to want to do is go up, grab their explosive barrels if they have some, and drop them on down. Once you've done all the damage you can with their explosive barrels and yours, go ahead and run back down to go and protect the holes you created. This will cause them definitely to sink. If not, it will slow them down enough where your rest of your crew can finish them off. Alright, and next up we have... Don't drop your anchor after you have already hit something, or if you're about to hit something, as it will cause you to likely get watched where you are instead of backing away, as just happened here with this new crew I was sailing with. What you're going to want to do is if you do get watched somewhere, raise up the sails all the way, make sure they are all the way up, or else you will not be backing up, and you also need to make sure that anchor is raised. Once you've made sure that anchor is raised, it'll start backing up. Unless, of course, you've been on that sandbar too long. If you've been beached too long, your ship will despawn, which is what just happened to this crew. Well, that concludes part two of how not to suck at Sea of Thieves. And as always, remember to like and subscribe in order to get back to the basics. To watch our other videos on how not to suck at Sea of Thieves or our videos on other games, be sure to click the links here.